Hello, and welcome to episode 53 in our Let's Play series of Space Engineer Survival Mode. Um, I figured out the antenna relay stuff. Um, set up a uh, wide LCD panel here to receive messages from the... Um, from the uh, satellite, the uh, antenna relay satellite. Um, let's do a quick demonstration of that. This is the relay satellite here. If I open up the terminal, check the controller block. You can see I can put stuff in here. Um, send is a send command, RSN is the channel, and then just whatever I put in there is what gets sent is the message. Um, the code is very similar to Patrick Henson's um, setup that he did in his video relatively recently. I'll put a link to that somewhere in the video, either in the cards or in the description or something, um, somewhere. Um, but setup's very similar, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Instead, we're going to spend this episode trying relatively quickly, hopefully, maybe, to uh, actually set this up to do something useful. Because right now, it is only sending anything when you explicitly send it an argument to send. Um, here it's sending a broadcast to the channel um, and then it sends either test or whatever you put in as, as arguments across the antenna relay. Uh, so instead we're going to want to actually do, now this is set up to receive also, but we're not actually transmitting any messages to this so it, this isn't really relevant. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to set this up instead of um, broadcasting a message when we tell it to send a message, it's going to send a message every 100 ticks. Um, at least establishing that there's a connection still, and uh, possibly going further than that, and um, words going further than that, and uh, sending out a, a broadcast saying, you know, I'm I'm low on ammunition, or I'm low on uranium fuel, because we do have a reactor attached to it. Uh, go out and guess and take a quick look. I installed a couch here too just so I could sit there and not worry about my energy being depleted. Um, we'll go out and take a quick look at the relay satellite just because we can't really see the satellite itself from inside. It's got cameras on it of course. Uh, I put an antenna here on the space industrial complex as well. I'll probably put another one over there for symmetry purposes but I'm not sure if it'll actually do anything other than just kind of be a backup. Where did I park it? Um, so the solar panels are not enough to keep it powered at the uh, antenna range we're going to want to use. So it does rely on a nuclear reactor right here to keep the power in the positive. Um, engines, turrets, everything that we built in the last episode. Um, but, you know, completed and with the uh, opposing turrets on there. And... Uh, what else did I add? Oh, I added the, the reactor that I said I was probably going to add. Um, so it does fly, you know, relatively well. But the, the main thing is that when you send that send command um, in the arguments, it does broadcast the message. And the uh, Space Industrial Complex programming block is set up to receive it. And uh, display all of the messages that it receives at this point on this LCD panel. Um, now again we want to modify that so that rather than just displaying all of these it will kind of uh, correlate you know the messages to the, the grid that's sending them or the program block that's sending them and say okay well this is a, a status update from this ship, this grid. Um, and will let us know what the, the ammo and uranium status is and, you know, just provide a, uh, what's the word? Keep alive? No, some kind of signal, whatever it's called, to indicate that, you know, it's still alive and functional and is not dead. I think I actually want to fix the space industrial complex controller first so that it does correlate the, the sender 
and replace the status message here before I tell it to send it every 100 ticks. Otherwise, it's just going to fill up with messages and get nasty looking. Um, so the one distinction between what I've got and what Patrick Hansen has on, on his video is find RSN displays. Is RSN, by the way, stands for um, radio or relay satellite network. Yeah, that's what that stands for. Um, and it doesn't matter what it stands for because I just use RSN everywhere. But anyway, uh, so we're finding the displays here. And if the display, and this is run on every 100 ticks, so you know, if we add a new display and set its custom data to display type equals RSN, um, it will catch it and add it to the RSN displays list. Um, now, the first time it finds it, it sets the content type and clears it, but then after that, it adds it to the list and it doesn't do that again because it's only if the list doesn't contain the surface that we're using already. So that's distinct from what he's got and then here when we accept the message we are displaying it to the RSM displays just like we did with the cargo displays for this other stuff. Even though the cargo displays at this point is just the one block excuse me, the one display on the programmable block. So what we have to do now is we have to create a dictionary. of RSN transmitters. So that's going to be a dictionary of long mapped to a string. I think that'll do for now. Alright, so the long is going to be this um, ID here that comes in as the source. You see when we display the message here, the packet tag is RSN, that's the channel. Packet source is um, which program block is sending it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then data, obviously, is the data. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want the source to map to the data whenever something comes in on the RSN um, channel. So, um, how do I want to do that? And then what we'll do is we'll display, you know, just one message, just the most recent message, because every time a message comes in, we'll replace the string that's in here. So it'll be the, the most recent message. I don't know about transmitters. Let's call this RSN data. RSN status data. Because this is basically the health of our um, relay satellite network. You know, if one's if it's running too low on power, then we'll need to know about that. If it's running low on ammunition, we'll need to know about that. If it's not connected at all, we'll need to know about that. <coughs> um, so the string will be the, the status message, and then the long will be the the ID and every time we get a message we'll be able to check the source and say do we already have this source yes okay overwrite this if we don't have the source we'll add a new one to the, the dictionary so um, for this here this is where we need to make the change really Because every time we get a message on the RSN channel, it is going to, it's got a registered broadcast listener on the RSN channel. It's going to send a message callback to RSN channel, meaning it's going to invoke the programming block with RSN channel as an argument, which means it's going to catch here. Update source is not equal none because it's not the 
the 100 type. It's because it, it came through here with an argument. So it's not going to be update type of none. It's going to be update type something else. I don't remember what it is. It's like update type argument or something, whatever. Um, and then the argument is going to equal the RSN channel. So we fetch packet from the RSN channel. So once we've got the packet, Uh, we want to actually update 100 on this, so we want to update RSN displays. And what this is going to do is it is going to, for each key value pair long string um, item I guess in RSN status data and then it is going to display to the RSN displays. Is that what I called it? Yeah, RSN displays an interpolated string of item. dot key item dot value nice and simple so this is just looping through the the different status data that we're saving which we're not actually saving yet, but we will be soon, um, and outputting it to the RSN displays. And I think before we do that, we actually need to clear the display. So display RSN displays empty string, and then set append to false, because the default is true. So this is going to append this is going to clear it first. So then each one of these will display as two lines and we want to do this at the end. So we'll have a we'll have the ID, we'll have the status, then we'll have a blank line and then ID, status, blank line and so on until we run out of <coughs> excuse me, until we run out of um, messages or we run out of message sources. So now instead of just outputting whatever comes in, we need to save it to the dictionary. And we only want to actually do that if channel equals RSN channel. And then oh what is that? Did I do that somewhere down here where I check and see if there's something in Yeah I did. It's not sort inventory. It's in display inventory. If the keys contains okay. Where'd that go? If RSN status data dot keys dot contains packet dot source. So that's this number. If the keys already contain that source, 
then RSN status data packet dot source equals packet dot data. Actually, no, I don't have to do that. I had to do that for the inventory because I was adding or initializing to zero. But since I'm just setting it equal to, I don't have to worry about if it's already there. I can just say, if it's a message over the channel, then update that item in the dictionary. So that should be good. Can I convert object to string on 49? Okay. So I have to cast this explicitly. Storm inbound. There we go. All right, so now this should clear this screen. There we go. Now, if I check the relay sat and go to the controller and send that command, It'll update the message, and then this will update the message, and then that'll update the message. Okay, so it's working. It's updating the message rather than at rather than appending it. It's updating what it's displaying for that ID. So now what we want to do is have this actually send a message automatically instead of just on command. So, here in the update 100 stuff, we are going to say um, broadcast RSN status. because we need to check a couple of inventories before we just send the message. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into a separate function. Now we need to check for Gatling ammo and uranium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dummy list of I my terminal block. Whoa. Blocks, it doesn't matter. We don't actually need these blocks. We're going to be abusing the future the filter function again. Grid terminal system dot get blocks of type blocks block if it's not connected. Turn false if not block dot has inventory return false now we need to get the inventory I my inventory block inventory equals I don't think I need to worry about cycling through multiple inventories because everything in the, the satellite right now only has one inventory and I don't think any of the blocks that we care about unless we build something with an assembler or something like that which I don't see why we would and we'll deal with that if we come across it later so we only need inventory zero so we'll do block dot get inventory zero now we need a list of my my inventory items and 
then we need to do block inventory dot get items and store it in items. And we actually need some counters here. We need a my fixed point. Meteor storm inbound. And we need an ant of ammo. Let me just make sure that I didn't screw that up. Cannot convert float to a fixed point. Okay, an explicit conversion exists. So fine, we'll do that. I just want to do it as a float. I'm just going to do it as a float. I'll cast it on the other side. Assignment never used. Assignment never used. That's fine. Okay. So once we get the items for each my inventory item, item in items. Item dot type is that what it is? Oh, this is the thing. It's not on. It's not the space industrial complex controller, so I don't have the inventory management stuff on already. We'll see if it's type or not. If item dot type contains containers contains ingot slash uranium. Because it's going to be world builder or whatever first, so it contains rather than equals. Then uranium plus equals cast to float item dot amount. My item type does not contain a definition for contains. Dot to string contains and we'll just never use that's fine. All right, so that will get us the uranium. And I'm just going to go ahead and explicitly broadcast the uranium. So now we do IGC dot send. broadcast message to RSN no it's just called channel here because it's the only channel that it uses send to channel and it's going to send uranium colon uranium dot to string and to kilograms it's going to send it transmission distance dot antenna relay all right so I think that should work yeah, ammo's not used yet, that's fine. Why is that not updating? That should be updating. Broadcast RSN status. Broadcast RSN status. cast that message across that channel. Da 
is what the channel is called, right? Oh, no, I called it Relay Satnet here. It should just be RSN. Always broadcasting on the wrong channel. There we go. Uranium, 99.06 kilograms. And slowly depleting. Okay, now the problem is, is that if something happens to the satellite, it'll just stop broadcasting, and this screen will be stuck as it is. So I think I want some kind of, like, maybe a timestamp, and like if the timestamp gets frozen, Well, in any case, I need to find out what the ammo is called. So that'll be on the controller. And then if I check the display and edit text, it'll tell me that it is this one. I'll we'll copy that. Go back to the relay set. Go back to the controller. And now, in addition to checking for uranium, I'm going to do if item dot type dot to string dot contains that ammo plus equals int item dot amount. And then in addition to that here, first of all, I'm going to bump this down to the next line because I'm going to need to. This is going to be zero because I don't actually have any ammo in there right now. And that is giving me decimal points. It shouldn't be giving me decimal points. I forget what I need to do here to get no decimal points. No parameters? There we go. Alright, so now hop out of here, go in here, and grab a bunch of these. Apparently that's as many as I can carry. There, dump the steel plates so I can get more. Now if I go out, and load these in here, it'll pull them into the turrets. As it sees fit. Why isn't it pulling it into that turret? Because that turret was turned off, that's why. Alright, so it doesn't quite fill them, but it loads them anyway. And that's sufficient for our purposes for now.
but now if I go back in here and go check our display it should be showing us 50 yep there we go so it is showing us that we have 99.02 kilograms of uranium and 50 magazines of ammo on that thing um, so now the next step we're going to want to do, and I'm way out of time, it's probably not going to upload in time to do an 11 o'clock premiere, but um, the next thing we're going to want to do is change that so that it shows the grid name instead of the, the ID number. Um, we're going to have to transmit that because that doesn't you know, come by default, so that's going to be kind of interesting the way that we kind of map that out um, and figure that out that way. But so that's a thing, and then we're also going to want to have some way of figuring out if the connection's disrupted. Because right now, if I were to go up here to the relay sat, and I'm going to have to manually turn this back on, but if I go here and just disable this antenna, we're not getting any new messages in, but you can't really tell. Like, you don't know whether you know we're just not using any uranium or ammo or if we're just not getting messages and the truth is we're not getting messages so if something got destroyed we would have no way of knowing that um, so we'll have to figure out some way of, of knowing that and updating our display here accordingly so subscribe to see how we figure that out likes comments and verbal abuse are welcome thanks for watching see you next time